Welcome to We Believe, a consideration of religious beliefs and God's Word, examined in conversation by James F. Walsh, an attorney and Roman Catholic deacon, and Dr. Richard Shriver, United Methodist minister and professor of theology. Each discussion embraces carefully chosen subjects, selected in an effort to deepen your religious awareness in the sincere hope that we believe will help provide a bridge of understanding among all the children of God. Well, Richard, welcome to We Believe. Hello, Jim. Here we are again, you know, we've been discussing a lot of things over a lot, a lot of months. A lot over many moons. Many moons. And now we're to the commandments, and we're going to be talking about the fourth commandment. And the I'll fifth commandment. The fourth commandment. The fifth commandment. I'll tell you about that in a minute. As it is given in the book of Exodus. Do you remember what it says in the book of Exodus? Exodus. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's good. What else? It makes a promise. That thy days may be long upon the earth. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Now, first of all, that's the fourth commandment. For we God. both must have honored our <laughs> fathers and mothers. I, I think you've honored yours a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But now let's clarify some confusion. It's for Catholics, the fourth commandment, but for you Protestants, it's the fifth. Will you mean, please tell me why all this mixed up since the Middle Ages? Well, I don't, I don't know that it makes any sense, except that you all are right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm glad. That's uh, all we, that's, that end of show. That's, that's good. <laughs> well, the proof of the pudding is that the word sex comes from the six, six. Sextus. Yeah. Referring to the sixth commandment. That's right. And according to our counting, it's the seventh there commandment. You have it. Uh, but, the but tell adultery we, we, thing. We get the word sex it's, from sextus, which was Latin. We get the word yeah, from Latin, you know. Right. The difference is that the Protestant counting separates what the Catholic first commandment That's is right. into two commandments. two commandments. And you separate the last, the last commandment, the co covet. You, you all covet twice. We only <laughs> covet once. That's right. <laughs> you covet the wife and goods, and we covet wife. And then the next time, good. Right. right. So like you all and have we to. We both end up with ten. But yeah, but you have to watch out for your coveting. <laughs> all right. A lot more than we do. Now, all right, here we go. We're going to say this again. And I'm going to ask you a question since you are our in-house scripture scholar, right? You know, that's what you are. Yeah. You teach, what is great, it you yeah. teach? Uh, uh, well, biblical studies and yes. theology. All right. Yeah. Right. It says there, and this is from the book of Exodus. It says, honor thy father and thy mother. And it's, then there's this promise. It's the only commandment with a promise. Yeah. And it says that thou may be long livest along uh, on the land which the Lord your God gives to you. Now, here's, here's what I was thinking. I don't know if it has any relation at all. But somewhere you told me, and I think I vaguely remember somewhere, I think in Exodus or someplace, it says if you're not obedient, a boy, if you're not obedient, the parents can have him stoned. Tell, me, tell us about that. Yeah, it's just a passage that if a young man is disrespectful of his parents, yeah. the parents can go, the father can go to the, to the council yeah. of the town, right. and uh, they can uh, uh, take him outside the wall of the town and have him stoned to death. You think that ever really happened? Not by any good parents, I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> well, do you suppose it has any relation to this well, promise well, I, to be long lived on the land which the Lord? Well, I think uh, probably the commandments <laughs> became came before right. the the stoning of the the, the right. son. But well, I don't know, uh, uh, but it it does sort of make an interesting tie there. Uh, the point is that we have got to to the Lord is telling us here. We've got to honor and obey our parents. That's that's what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, I hope my kids and grandchildren are listening. Yeah, well, you might say in figurative sense, while God is talking to the children here, he's looking over their shoulder, figuratively speaking, and saying, you've got to be worthy of the honor and obedience. Uh -huh. and, uh, now that, there's, there's the key to it. And so, you know, in a certain sense, you could say all, all authority actually in the end comes from God. So people, the parents have a, have, a, have a real obligation 
because they're acting in a sense as God's instrument, so to speak. And this is true also of a governor, of a mayor, of a president. You're acting in, in the place or as an agent of, the, of God, and, and it's up to you to act in a positive, honorable, legal way. You, you know, and it's interesting that in the New Testament, Jesus tells us to pray our Father. Yeah. So he sort of reverses the thing that when we think of God, we think of the perfect parent. Yeah. That the relationship between God and us is parent-child, uh, and, and we're the children. Uh, that that's the way God looks at us, and it's the way parents should perceive their children in terms of uh, respect, yeah. mutual respect. Well, we have to be worthy of that which God requests. You know, the Confucian religion, this was a, a big part of it, uh, that, uh, that Confucius taught that, that uh, a part of the whole uh, circle of life, you might call yeah. it, is dependent upon uh, uh, children's, it, it's called filial piety. Uh, children should respect their parents and that the parents should be worthy of respect. Sure. You brought that out very well. Okay. Well, it should be a, a sobering thought to us. I mean, you, you, the parents, the father, for example, he works all day, maybe he, he, he don't, puts his whole life into his work, maybe, and he comes home and just expresses his anger to his children and yeah, wife. Yeah. You know, he can't do it at work, so he... Well, you shut up, man. Shut up. <laughs> and, 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 you know, sometimes families have to have two people working, but it, it may be a sobering thought that, you know, maybe the wife doesn't would be better off at home looking after the kids and having somebody to... Now, to you're going to get in trouble with a little bit of sexism I'm, here, I'm know, sure uh, they will, yeah, but I uh, think uh, it takes two people to raise a family. And sometime a wife may be going and ha want to go to work when she doesn't, re uh, a second job, you might say, to make money that maybe they could get along without, and they neglect the children, they neglect the raising of the children. You think that's possible? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking, Jim, when we were thinking about doing this show, you and I grew up in a really wonderful time and place. Yeah. We both grew up in Nashville uh, at a time with, with parents uh, and family. And uh, I had wonderful parents. You had wonderful parents. Yeah. We could spend the whole show talking about our, our parents. We had wonderful homes. Uh, we came out of the Great Depression, but uh, we had we had plenty, yeah. uh, and uh, we were lucky. We we just we were we were so uh, fortunate uh, in 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 the time and place and the kinds of homes mm. that we grew up in that it's hard for us to imagine how rough it is for many parents today because both parents work, yeah, the so. children, it, you know, that latchkey child that comes yeah. home from school and spends the afternoon alone. in front of the television yeah. set maybe yeah. alone. Alone, yeah. you know, they're being educated and advised by the television. I, I remember a church that I knew about that they built, they, they bought a house and built a whole program around uh, getting the neighborhood children whose parents uh, were working and yeah. that, that they had no place to go and got them in and got a program going where they were, uh, where they had games and fun and, yeah. uh, and care, that it was, it's a very vital well, it's tough sometimes. Sometimes you have to have two people working to make it make, yeah. make the great. Well, but in anyway, our day, that's, that's the case for just about everybody. Well, anyway, to, to move right on, we, we know that we have obligation first to our spouse, husband and wife, but after that, it's next to the children. And it, we, we have to raise a child if we can, if we're Christians, in a peaceful, happy, 
and if you're a Christian, Christ-centered home, if you can try to do that. And if you do that, if that has been done, then you've given the children the best beginning they can, they can get. Now, of course, you need certain things as a young. You, you need to have food and care. You need housing and so forth. As they get older, you have to have, give them education. Go ahead. Let me, let me throw a question at you that maybe we want to save for the question answer yeah. period. Uh, should the spouse perceive the children as more important than the spouse, others than their spouse, or should the spouse always perceive the mate, the other spouse, as first? <laughs> well, that's and it brings up all the business yeah. of when you discipline your children, yeah. do you ever disagree in front of them? That's right. That's another point. Yeah. This bickering and Let, let's kids. talk about that later. I always say that for the for this learned group we'll have coming in here later, yeah. and they can they can chew on that one. But anyway, if if we can give those children that, if we can give them a Christ-centered home that's happy and peaceful, then I think that we've given them the best best start. We'll we'll get on the way to to life. And here's another Richard. Here's another thing. You know, we're responsible and we have to answer to God for the souls of people we brought into this world, which mm -hmm. is to say our children. So that's kind of a sobering thought uh, to think about. Before we close up here, do you have any further thoughts, any other questions you think we ought to hit and cover? Well, we might talk about adoption. Uh, uh, my wife and I adopted oh, okay. our two children. Yeah. And... Uh, the question uh, all of our adult life has been, who is the parent? Is it the birth parents That's right. who the father might not even know about them, uh, the birth father, the, uh, the birth mother? Uh, I'm sure it was the most difficult thing in most cases in their lives yeah. to give up a child. Yeah. Uh, but are they the parents? Are the people that raise them the That's parents? That's right. Uh, and of course, being an adoptive parent, I think parenting has to do with the raising of them, not I kind of think just so. I think birth. you are really take over. But you that hear place. it. Who's the real parent? <coughs> yeah. And uh, and I think we are. Well, <laughs> I think you are too. And you have two adopted children. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, they got a good parent. I'll have to say that. I, I knew you. They wife. don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, folks, well, this pretty well wraps it up, our first session. Stay with us because we're going to bring some people in here, and they're going to have some questions about what we have, have discussed, and I'm sure they may argue with us a little bit about some of the things we've said. But in the meantime, thanks for being with us, and stay with us because we'll be right back, so don't go away. Thank you. Stay with us. back again, ladies and gentlemen, with We Believe, and now we have some very special guests. Richard, we've got special guests here with Thank Kim you. Ballinger. Have I said that right? More or less. I'm pretty close, right? Uh, that's close. That's All close. right. And John Basio. John is from Italy. We call him our Italian stallion, as oh. that's more or less. <laughs> okay. Sometime we, I think that's another name for a prize fighter, maybe. That's right. But anyway, they have been listening, Richard, very carefully to what we have said. And I think they may contradict us or bring us to some, some kind of 
something here. Let's see. Well, let's, let's hope see. they have some questions. Let's see what questions <laughs> they have. Oh, ladies first. How about well, you? Well, thank you. Thank you. I've, I picked up on uh, several things. I, I found it very interesting. Um, when Richard was talking earlier, first he mentioned something about rebellious children being stoned. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking, well, I don't think that that's going to go over well. Uh, obviously, two centuries ago, that probably happened. Yeah. But uh, what do you do but now the, about sure rebellious you children? That you promise mean, two, in that commandment two millennia. that you may be long lived on the <laughs> land which the Lord you, <laughs> you get out rebellious of line. Rebellious children weren't long lived. You get out of line, you may get stoned. You know? That's right. Okay. That's right. So I'm not sure that there's a connection there. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, it 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 really puts puts the onus on on parents now who have rebellious children. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's a it's a difficult world out there, and, yeah. and this point was also brought up that we live in a different world. Yeah. We yeah. we live in a different world from 2,000 years ago, and from from when you and Richard yeah, grew up. 50 years ago. Yeah. This is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. This mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I picked up on something else. You were asking the question of who. Uh, primary obligation. Yeah, what are the primary obligations? And I'm, I looked at it from my background as a co marriage counselor. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I noticed is that parents, um, if they are not together uh, and make the children, if one of them makes the children a priority, it's really hurting yeah. the marriage too. Yeah. Because it's visible, especially today, as couples get older and children leave the nest. Yeah then you don't have anything. That's right. And in fact, I was listening to, a, to NPR just yesterday. There was a show talking about the epidemic of divorces taking place. They call them gray divorces. What do they call them? Gray. Gray, gray, gray divorces. Gray older couples. Because yeah. once the children leave, uh, yeah. what do we do? We don't know each other and, anymore. And you say if, if, the, if the parent's commitment is primarily to the child and the child leaves when you're with a stranger, you might That's right. say. That's right. uh, we should tell the folks out there that you have a degree in counsel, in family counseling, do yes. you not? Yes. We may need and you sooner or later. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good point. Yeah. Good point. Both of you have good points. Well, we, and Anything we talked else? earlier about the, the connection of the, the family unit being the domestic church. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. explored that a little bit. That, well, that my, my feeling about the uh, Richard, uh, spouses looking at each other as number one. Yeah. Do you agree with uh, that? I do. I think it's very, very important. Now, I don't know that I can convince my wife of that, <laughs> but uh, uh, she, she is, she she is so child She had a dog, a picture of the dog on the mantelpiece. Or the, she, if, if, she puts her the dog before you or something. You yeah. Well, in her I'm office kidding. on her I'm, desk. I'm kidding. She's, she's got a thousand pictures of the kids and the grandkids. <laughs> I think there's one of me in there, you know. I'm and kidding. And it's not a very good one. I'm sure she has but you before the dog. My point of it is, unless the parents are bound together in yeah. and and avoid disagreements in front of the children. Yeah, if you can. I mean, yeah. the disagreements are going to happen. Yeah. But they need to be in the privacy of not, particularly if they're about how to take care of the children. That's right. They should not be doing it in front of the mm. children. Uh, but it, unless the parents, I, I'm convinced, unless the parents perceive each other as first, then they will not be consistent in the way they well, deal with the children. And it puts a, a barrier between husband and wife, uh, between the two and, principles. And, and the children need the consistency yeah. of they, parents. They need their role model. Yeah. They, they yeah. need their role model of how, what husband and wife do and how they work together. And sometimes being exposed to conflicts and in front of the children, it's okay because as long as you manage the conflict, yeah. uh, because they need to see how you resolve a conflict. Uh, it's just when it gets out of hand and, and, the, and the children get hurt. But uh, I think that it, the issue of who comes first or, or the working together as a couple has two, two benefits. One is for them as the couple because it holds them together and binds them together. The other one is for the sake of the kids yeah. because the children will learn from them what it is like to be married what it is like to be a, uh, a husband, what to be a wife, yeah. and, and relate in that way. So 
that it's, it's a very complicated type of set of relationship between parents and children and, and what goes on there. Yeah. I would agree that disagreements in the whole family need to be open, you know, freedom of speech sure, sort sure. of thing, <coughs> but not fighting. No, not fighting. Not You're right. fighting, You're yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they boil up, and you just have to say, well, we'll yeah, talk about well, it later. Yeah. Well, one thing we really haven't considered, you're talking about things being different, and things have been different just in a few, relatively few years. The, the age, people live longer these days. Mm -hmm. It used to be if somebody lived to be 100, it was in the newspaper, you know. Well, that's mm -hmm. not anymore because it's not that uncommon. But I read the other day, I heard, I guess, on television or radio, that unless we have a, a plague or a war or something, children born today will have a life expectancy of 100 years. Now, that is going to change society sure. somehow. Sure. We're going to have to be considerate of older people and mm -hmm. how they're handled. Mm -hmm. and you and I should be interested in that aspect, uh, Richard, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. as you are. So do you agree with that? I agree with that. I, you know, my, uh, my dad is 88, and he lives with us. Yeah. Uh, he is in good health, except for his eyesight, and he's a blessing. Yeah. He, he's a, a blessing to my, my children, who view him as somebody who is wise and can give them insight into uh, what happened before they were born, what, what happened yeah. in the country before they were born. Uh, well, it's, it's, it seems it's, to me that might apply mostly or always to a rural society, that, mm -hmm. that older people came to live in a farming community, mm -hmm. came to live in the, in the house with sure. their children. There was room there, and they, even they had some work to do. But if you're cramped into a city, mm -hmm. then it's hard sometimes. And sometimes older people are kind of put into homes, you might say, to, to warehouse, they say, and store them mm -hmm. away. Well, we have an ideal situation, but sometimes there is not an ideal situation, right. and sometimes a uh, my, luckily, my dad is in good health. If he were not in good health, we would have to look for right. an alternative mm -hmm. situation yeah. for him. Um, the whole thing is, is an issue that we'll be talking about in, diff in a different show about the virtue of justice. Yeah. Because it's really uh, an issue of justice that adult children should take care of their parents. Yeah. And that becomes difficult today when, with a long life and the distances we live. That's right. Uh, and and combined in a city situation sure, sure. rather than a rural community. Mm -hmm. well, right. well, what else you got, Kim? You've got three or four questions, I know. Oh, let's see. I wrote down, children live what they learn. <laughs> um, uh. That was just something that occurred to me as, as you were talking. We we're talking about the environment within the home, yeah. that uh, children see and they retain more what you do than what you say. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I, I know with my own children, with my own experiences with my children, that they were pretty savvy. They knew that uh, if mother said no, yeah. sometimes they'd go to dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he was smart enough to say, have you asked your mother? What did your mother say about <laughs> this? Yeah. <laughs> so, smart enough. so that's 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 something that I think is universal, and which gets back to the point that as long as the parents are united, yeah. the children will understand that the parents are united, mm -hmm. and not really try and play them one against the other because it's not going to get them anywhere. Yeah. Another point that came to mind as I was listening to you. Uh, was the whole dimension of this particular commandment that uh, although it mentions father or parents, yeah. it's really also anybody in authority. That's right. The That's political true. system and, and, right. the, and the politicians and the need to pray for them like you pray for your parents and, and yeah. respect them like you respect your parents. Yeah. You, the persons in authority have a very grave obligation. If people are bound or obligated to obey you, mm -hmm. you've got to be right. You've got to act in accordance with the law, act in accordance with morality. Right. You know, I might, I might uh, say the worst thing you could do is you could hurt a man's body, but the worst thing you do is hurt their soul by giving a bad example, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. and that would be bad. 
But now, Kim uh, asked us, uh, you were asking me about some advice my mother gave me. Exactly. We had talked about that earlier. Yeah, well, uh, Richard said to me, I want you to talk about your mother and father, what advice they gave you. And I said, what? I can't remember what they, they, what did I say? Then I remembered one thing my mother said. <laughs> she said, relative to dating, you know, she said, you know, Jimmy, you could fall in love with a rich girl just as soon as a poor one. <laughs> I guess and that how did that work I, out? Well, I kind of middled ways. <laughs> 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 what did your What did your folks uh, advise you? Well, my dad, I, I I had intended to be a lawyer like my father and yeah. my brother. Yeah. You know, and in my senior year in college, I got drawn into the church uh, and changed. Yeah. And uh, my dad sort of accepted it. He he wasn't all that happy about it, but he accepted it. Yeah. Said, well, set your set your uh, sight on being a bishop. <laughs> okay, all right, good. <laughs> and yeah. my reaction, uh, Methodists have bishops, yeah. and uh, <laughs> my reaction was, that's the last thing on earth I want to be. Yeah. Uh, and I still feel that way, I might add. They may feel that way too, Richard. But my mother, her reaction was that she she said, you know, a lay person can do as much good in the world as a clergy yeah. person can. And I found out why. Wow, when wow, she was a girl, that? her father was president of a church. Oh, he, he was a minister, a, wasn't he? Well, no, he was president of a church college. Oh, I see. And, uh, and, and whenever any of the members of that church, well, he was a Baptist, Southern Baptist and, in Texas, and whenever any Baptist preachers came to town. They came to his house to spend the night, and they got my mother's bed, and she had to sleep <laughs> on the couch. And so she wasn't all that fond of clergy, you know. Oh, yeah. she, she didn't want me to be one of those. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to We Believe here for the last few minutes. And anything else, John, that you want to add here in these closing minutes of our? I just think that this is a very important uh, commandment. I think is the is in in the in the, in the decalogue yeah. the, the the Ten Commandments is the one that begins our responsibility toward others. That's right. That's and right. I think we need to work out. Work well, with that. and this is something that you work with very very often sure. and, and advise. And we're sure. going to be doing a series of shows with you on the, uh, on the subject, the virtues. Right. And Anything for you, Kim? One last observation quickly or we're going to be good? No, I think we've covered everything. All right. Well, I hope so. I hope so. But in any event, it's been nice to be with you folks and tune in again to We Believe. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you all Thank you. for being with us. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm.